Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Noah Holly, and welcome back to another episode of the Pride Report. Last night, I was joined by Sean Bach to discuss the four biggest games of the weekend ahead. Take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the final weekend of regular season college basketball. Here to break it down is Sean Bach once again. How's it going, Sean? Good, Noah. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. All right, so for today's show, like I said, Sean is going to be joining me to preview the four biggest games of the weekend. We're going to be talking Cincinnati versus Wichita State, which is on Sunday, Michigan versus Michigan State, Kentucky versus Florida, and of course, UNC versus Duke, the big one. Similar to yesterday's episode, he's going to break down the matchup, and then I'm going to talk about the bracketology implications of each result. Uh, how about we start with where we left off on Friday, which of course was the Big Ten Tournament. Uh, the rematch we were all hoping for, Michigan versus Michigan State, will tip off at 2 p.m. Eastern on CBS. These teams have won 7 and 13 games in a row, respectively. In fact, Michigan State's last loss came against the Wolverines in the only prior meeting between the rivals. Sean, who do you have emerging victorious in this one? This one is very tough to predict. Michigan is playing some of the best ball in the country right now. Especially today, they look, er, they look absolutely phenomenal against Nebraska. They were 11 of 23, which is 84 percent from, or 48 percent, excuse me, from three-point line. They forced the Hawks to shoot 32 percent from the field, 24 percent from three. I would not want to play Michigan right now. I mean, granted, Iowa and Nebraska aren't the toughest opponents, but they still have all the confidence in the world. They're playing at a very high level. They just know how to dish it out to the shooters. Um, they're playing great defense, just playing all around great basketball. It's been great to see. Mo Wagner's been playing absolutely out of his mind. It's just been it's just been a joy to watch. And it's crazy to see how John Beeline gets all these guys to buy in at the right time, which is awesome. Michigan State on the other hand, um, solid victory over at Wisconsin today. I mean, they came out a little flat. Um, but I mean that I tweeted something earlier about Michigan, or like the double buy is kind of a killer big time play. I mean, you got a team like Wisconsin mm-hmm. who has, I mean, had Michigan State's number at the beginning, or at the end of the year, had another tough game that they came out um, victorious in big time play, their big time tournament. And then they have another game today against Michigan State, and they're already hungry to get back at them. So, um, Michigan State, uh, I think. They're, I mean, like I said, excellent team, up and down, phenomenal. Miles Bridges playing very well. Josh Langford stepped up today. But in this one, I'm going to take the hot. I think I'm going to take Michigan. They've just been playing so well on both ends of the floor. Um, consistent, shooting the ball really well. Duncan Robinson has also been a threat from three-point land, like we've seen. Um, I just got to take the Wolverines in this one. All right. In terms of my bracketology, Both of these teams impress me more and more with each passing game, but both remain badly in need of a resume boost. If Michigan State wins this game, which would be a Quadrant 1 victory, they will be right outside the top seed line. Uh, If the Spartans end up winning the Big Ten tournament, I imagine they would be a one seed, but I'm not yet sure who they would knock out. Uh, And as for Michigan, I moved them ahead of Florida for the last five seed uh, with today's win over Nebraska. Uh, The Wolverines are not yet in the conversation for anything higher, but there is an open spot on the four line with Ohio State's loss to Penn State, so a win over Michigan State would change that. Uh, Now let's talk about Florida hosting Kentucky at noon uh, on CBS. Sean, what are your thoughts on this one? I mean, Kentucky, after losing four straight, they've railed off four straight dubs. They seem to be playing their best ball at the right time. Kevin Knox has been phenomenal. He's finally getting comfortable and realizing he needs to be great in order for this team to win. Um, on the other hand, Florida picked up huge wins against Auburn and on the road at Bama after losing three or four straight. Um, Jalen Hudson has been playing at a really high level, averaging 22.5 points per game in those two wins. Kayvon Allen also has been playing well, 18.5 points in the last two. These guys are the ticket for Florida. Um, I think they're going to be the difference. Kentucky, like I said, has been picking it up lately. They're getting more guys to contribute. As Cal said, um, there is, this team is really starting to buy in, and he's always preached, we're our own worst enemy. And I think this Wildcats team is kind of start, finally starting to figure it out, realizing that if we are going to win, we got to believe in ourselves, and we can't let ourselves be, we can't beat ourselves up when we get down or anything like that. Um, a lot of teams are going to 
have a we have target on our back because the name on the front of our jersey. So um, they're realizing they need to play within themselves and just play to the best of their abilities, and that's what they've been doing lately. And I think they're going to continue that streak right here, and they're going to somehow um, knock off a really hot Florida team who um, is coming off two straight dubs. All right, now as of Thursday's projections, which I did not release to the public, I had both Kentucky and Florida as five seeds. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in this segment, I bumped Florida off the five line in favor of Michigan, but a win over a red-hot Kentucky team would give them 10 Quadrant 1 wins, so it, would, so it would be extremely hard to keep them off the five line, especially if they can beat Kentucky, which would potentially open another spot. Uh, all right, now let's discuss Cincinnati traveling to Wichita State Sunday at noon on CBS in a battle that will decide the American Athletic regular season crown. This is the highly anticipated rematch of Wichita State's four-point win uh, on the Bearcats' home floor two Sundays ago. They're going to be looking for the sweep on Sunday. Sean, will they get it? Um, You know, I'm feeling confident in Wichita State. Uh, they've won seven in a row. They had to go to overtime for Central Florida on Thursday, so that kind of raised a couple red flags. But it's going to be an absolute bad on Sunday, Noah. Um, this arena I've heard is already sold out. Tickets are going for an insane amount of money. Um, this is huge. I mean, Wichita State, their first year in the American Conference, people kind of had their doubts about them playing better competition night in, night out. I mean, granted, the bottom of the uh, AAC isn't particularly strong. But they've done a great job of adjusting. Uh, they've hit some rough, patch, rough patches during the year, but they've learned to really put those behind them, and they're playing great ball right now. Since the other hand, has also won three in a row. Uh, I believe their last loss was to Wichita State, actually, on February 18th. So they're going to come out ready. Um, Wichita State, great team up and down the lineup. Landry Shannon, obviously one of the best guards in the country. Counter Frank Hansen playing well. Keel Morris is also playing his best basketball of the year, um, which seems to be a common trend for him down the stretch. So I think this one, I think Wichita State's going to come on top. Um, the home court advantage is definitely going to be a big help. Um, I just think if this game is both, I mean, it's not. It's such a good game that really, if whatever team loses, I don't think their NCAA tournament um, seeding or anything like that will be affected. I mean, they're both a number three seed in Lenardi's latest bracketology. I don't really see. I can only see them going up if they win. So, in this one, I think I'm going to take Wichita State. It's going to be a grind them out game, but I think Wichita State, their depth is going to be a lot for Cincinnati to handle. Um, Cincinnati's a great team, don't get me wrong, but I just like Wichita State in this one. All right. Now, I would say that Cincinnati probably needs this even more than Wichita State does in terms of my bracketology. As of now, Cincinnati has one true quality win uh, over Houston. If the Bearcats don't end up meeting the Shockers for a third time in the American tournament, then that means this is their last chance at an elite win. And if that's the case, Cincinnati probably won't be able to crack the two line if they lose tomorrow night. Uh, and now let's talk about the big one, the greatest rivalry in all of college basketball, UNC versus Duke the gift that keeps on giving. The environment at Cameron Indoor will be insane, and this matchup never fails to entertain, so I absolutely cannot wait. Uh, this is going to be at 8 p.m. on ESPN, of course. Sean, who do you think is going to win this game? Oh, uh, man, this is tough, but I think I'm going to save Duke, but both of these teams are really interesting, Noah. Um, um, very talented, but just very inconsistent. Um, one night they look like a national title contender, and then the next night they look like a team that will make it past the first weekend. Um, the big question for me is how will Duke adjust with Marvin Bagley in the lineup? We've seen him and we've seen Duke and Grace Allen has been, especially Grace Allen, has been great without Bagley. I mean, they went 4 0 without him and lost against Virginia Tech on Sunday, which was the first game back for Bagley. So it'll be interesting to see how this team, how this team really regroups and. Um, find a way to really uh, perform at a high level with him in the lineup. North Carolina, on the other hand, um, has one of the best offenses in the country. They were coming off a six-game winning streak until they lost to Miami on Tuesday, or last, yeah, Tuesday, which was a tough loss for them. But um, offensively, they've been phenomenal. Joel Berry, Luke May, has been one of the best ones to punch. Theo Pinson's really stepping up. Cam Johnson's been shooting well. Um, 
this is just going to be a grind out battle like every tobacco road rivalry. Uh, I think Duke has talent, a little more talent, which will probably be the difference in the end. But man, if Mar- if Duke can figure out how to be how to be if Duke can figure out how to be even better with Bagley in the lineup, then I have a hard time seeing them really not make it to the Final Four. I mean, they've been playing great without them. If they can just adjust, their defense has been better with the zone. Their offense is clicking a little bit, but that's still their weak spot. So if they can figure all that out, I think they have a real good chance to make it deep in the tournament regardless of matchups. But in this one, I think they're going to prevail too. So I'll take the, I'll take the Blue Devils. Interesting. All right. In my current projections, I have both teams as two seeds. I have UNC slightly ahead of Duke as the Tar Heels have 10 Quadrant 1 wins to Duke's 4, as well as the top strength of schedule in the country. Overall, I just think UNC has the much better resume. Uh, If UNC wins, they will have a great chance to return to the one line in my Monday projections. If Duke wins, they're going to be in contention as well, but they're probably going to need some help. It all depends on how the uh, on, on how my uh, four current top seeds fare over the weekend, as well as if Michigan State wins the Big Ten tournament or not. Uh, all right, that is going to wrap up this segment. Sean, thank you so much for joining me once again. Yeah, thank you for having me, Noah.